젠슨 황 엔비디아의 공동 창업자이자 CEO인 그는 대만계 미국인으로 대만 타이난시에서 태어났으며 9살에 가족들과 함께 미국 켄터키로 이주했습니다. 그후 오리건 주립대학교에서 전기공학 학사를 취득했고 92년에 스탠퍼드 대학교 전기공학 석사학위를 취득했습니다. LSI 로지스틱스와 AMD에서 마이크로 프로세서 설계를 담당했고 엔비디아를 공동 설립한 후 지금까지 킹비디아의 신화를 이어나가고 있습니다. 상장 후 지금까지 약 900배 가까운 주가 성장을 만들어낸 젠슨 황의 이야기를 함께 들어보도록 하겠습니다. 알파 컨덕터 채널 구독과 좋아요 알림 설정하시면 최신 영상을 가장 빠르게 시청하실 수 있습니다. Jensen, this is such an honor. Thank you for being here. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. In honor of your return to Stanford, I decided we'd start talking about the time when you first left. You joined LSI Logic, and that was one of the most exciting companies at the time. You're building a phenomenal reputation with some of the biggest names in tech, and yet you decide to leave to become a founder. What motivated you? Uh, uh, Chris and Curtis. Chris and Curtis, uh, uh, I was an engineer at LSI Logic, and Chris and Curtis were at Sun. And I was working with, with uh, uh, some of the brightest minds in computer science at the time, uh, uh, of all time. Uh, including Andy Bechtelsheim and others, uh, building, building workstations and graphics workstations and so on and so forth. And uh, Chris and Curtis uh, uh, said one day that they like to leave Sun and they like uh, me to go figure out what they're going to go leave for. And, and um, uh, I had a great job, uh, but they, they insisted that I uh, f figure out you know, with them, uh, how, to, how to build a company. And so, so we hung out at Denny's whenever, whenever they dropped by, and, and uh, uh, which, was, which is, by the way, my alma mater, my, my first company. Uh, you know, my first job before, for, before CEO was a, was a dishwasher. And so, and, and I did that very well. <laughs> and, and so anyways, uh, we got together, and, and, we, we decided, and it was during the, the microprocessor revolution. This is 1993. And in 1992, when we were getting together, uh, the PC revolution was just getting going. You, you know that Windows 95, obviously, which is the revolutionary version of Windows, uh, didn't even come to the market yet. And Pentium wasn't even announced yet. And, so it's, and this, is, this is all before the, right before the PC revolution. And, and it, was, it was pretty clear that, that uh, the microprocessor was going to be very important. And we, we thought, you know, why don't we build a company uh, to go solve problems that a normal computer that is uh, powered by general purpose computing can't? And, and so that, that became the company's mission, uh, to, go, to go build a computer, uh, the type of computers, and solve problems that normal computers can't. And to this day, uh, we're focused on that. And if you look at all the, the problems that, that um, and the markets that we opened up as a result, uh, it's, you know, things like, uh, computational drug design, um, uh, weather simulation, materials design. These are all things that we're really, really proud of. Uh, robotics, uh, self-driving cars, uh, autonomous, autonomous uh, software we call artificial intelligence. Uh, and then, all, you know, of course, uh, we, uh, we drove the, the, uh, uh, the technology so hard that, that eventually the computational cost uh, uh, went to approximately zero and then enabled enable the whole new way of developing software, where the computer wrote the software itself, artificial intelligence as we know it today. And so, so I, that, that, was, that was it. That was the journey. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> <laughs>
And the video, and so it was a million dollars, and it's hard to make cheap. Um, and the video game market was zero billion dollars. So you have this incredible technology that's hard to uh, commoditize and commercialize. And then you have this market that doesn't exist. That, was, that intersection was the founding of our company. And, and I still remember uh, when, when Don, at the end of my presentation, uh, you know, Don was still kind of, he, he said, you know, one of the things he said to me, which made a lot of sense back then, it makes a lot of sense today, he says, startups don't invest in startups, or startups don't partner with startups. And his point is that in order for NVIDIA to succeed, we needed another startup to succeed. And that other startup was Electronic Arts. And, and then he, on the way out, he's, he reminded me that Electronic Arts' CTO is 14 years old and had to be driven to work by his mom. <laughs> and he just wanted to remind me that that's who I'm relying on. <laughs> that, that, and, then, and, uh, and then after that, he said, if you lose my money, I'll kill you. And that, that, was, that was kind of my memories of that first meeting. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we, created, uh, we created something. Uh, we went on uh, the next several years to go create the market, to create the gaming market for PCs. And it took a long time to do so. We're still doing it today. Uh, we realized that not only do you have to create the technology and uh, invent a new way of doing computer graphics so that what was a million dollars is now, you know, three, four hundred, five hundred dollars um, that fits in the computer. And you have to go create this new market. So we have to create technology, create markets. The idea that a company would create technology, create markets defines NVIDIA today. Almost everything we do, we create technology, we create markets. That's the reason why people say we have a, you know, people call it a stack, an ecosystem, words like that. Um, but that's basically it. At the core, for 30 years, what NVIDIA realized we had to do is in order to uh, create the conditions by which somebody could buy our products, we had to go invent this new market. And uh, it's the reason why we were early in autonomous driving. It was the reason why we are early in deep learning. It was the reason why we are early in just about all these things, including uh, computational drug, drug design and, and discovery. Um, all these different areas, we're trying to create the market while we're creating the technology. And so that, that's, um, uh, okay, and then we got, we got going, and, and then, and then um, Microsoft introduced uh, a standard called Direct3D. And that spawned off hundreds of companies. And we found ourselves a couple of years later, competing with just about everybody. And, and the thing that, that we invented the company, the technology we invented uh, 3D graphics with, the consumerized 3D with, turns out to be incompatible with direct 3D. So we started this company. We had this 3D graphics thing, we, a million dollar thing. We're trying to make it consumerized. And so we invented all this technology. And then shortly after, it became incompatible. And um, uh, so we had to reset the company uh, or go out of business. Uh, but we didn't know how to we didn't know how to build it the way that Microsoft had defined it, and um, and uh, I remember I remember a meeting at at you know on a weekend and the conversation was you know we now have 89 competitors. Uh, I understand that the way we do it is not not right, but we don't know how to do it the right way. And and um, uh, thankfully uh, there was another bookstore. And, um, uh, and the bookstore is called Fry's, Fry's Electronics. I, I don't think, I, I don't know if it's still here. Um, and so I had, I, had, I, had um, I, I, I think I drove Madison, my daughter, uh, on a weekend to Fry's. And, and it was sitting right there, the OpenGL manual, uh, which would define uh, how Silicon Graphics did computer graphics. And so it was, it was right there. It was like $68 a book. And so I had a couple hundred dollars. I bought three books. I took it back to the office, and I said, guys, I found it, our future. And I handed out. I had three versions of it. I handed it out. Had a big, nice cent centerfold. You know, the centerfold is the OpenGL pipeline, which is the computer graphics pipeline. And, um, I, and I handed it to uh, the same geniuses that I founded the company with. And we implemented the OpenGL pipeline like nobody had ever op implemented the OpenGL pipeline. And we built something the world never seen. And so uh, a lot of lessons are right there 
that moment in time for our company uh, gave us so much confidence. And the reason for that is you can succeed in doing something, inventing a future, even if you were not informed about it at all. And it's kind of the, my attitude about everything now. You know, when somebody tells me about something and I've never heard of it before, uh, or if I've heard of it, never, don't understand how it works at all, my first thought is always, you know, how hard can it be? And it's probably just a textbook away. You know, you're probably one archive paper away from figuring this out. And so I spent a lot of time reading archive papers. And, um, uh, and then it, it's true. It's true. You can, you can um, now of course, you can't learn how somebody else does something and do it exactly the same way and hope to have a different outcome. But you could learn how something can be done and then go back to first principles and ask yourself, um, given the conditions today, given my motivation, given the instruments, the tools, um, given you know, how things have changed, how would I redo this? How would I reinvent this whole thing? How would I design it? How would I build a car today? Would I build it incrementally from 1950s and 1900s? How would I build a computer today? How would I write software today? Does it make sense? And so I go back to first principles all the time, uh, even in the company today, and just reset ourselves. You know, because the world has changed. And um, the way we wrote software in the past was monolithic, and it's designed for supercomputers, but now it's disaggregated, it's, you know, so on and so forth. And uh, how we think about software today, how we think about computers today, how we think, just always cause your company, always cause yourself to go back to first, first principles, and it creates lots and lots of opportunities. Jensen Huang is not aware of what is not known about what is not known about the future, but it can be able to create the future of the future. He has to think about the basic principles, 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 and the basic principles. He has to think about his own self, 기본 원칙으로 돌아가게 하면 수많은 기회가 창출될 것이라고 말합니다. 투자도 마찬가지인 것 같습니다. 이기는 전략과 그에 따른 원칙들을 지켜나가고 시장의 변화에 유연하게 대응해야 엔비디아의 성장처럼 우리 모두의 계좌도 우상향할 수 있을 것이라고 믿습니다. 오늘 영상도 시청해주셔서 감사합니다. 다음 시간에 더 유익한 내용으로 찾아뵙겠습니다. 금융시장 초과 수익 지휘자 알파 컨덕터였습니다.